What's up, y'all? It is Erica Rose, and I am back. Y'all, I feel amazing. I feel amazing. I feel really, really good. I have not been doing any drinking at all. Sorry, y'all, if I look, whatever. I just got off work, and I said, let me sit down here and do this video real quick. Let me get y'all centered. I had to cut on some light. Um, the last video I did, everything just looked dark and kind of shaded, and it just looked crazy. I still haven't got used to, you know, picking up my phone and telling myself, um, Erica, check the lighting, check the sound. Uh, it's still hard for me to pick up my phone. I told y'all, it has been 10 plus years since I've done anything on social media. And I'm just not used to picking up my phone. I have to tell myself sometimes, like, girl, get the phone, press record. And when I do, I'm not checking all that stuff. So it's going to come to me, hopefully. You know, maybe the more I do it, the more I'll get used to it. We'll see. So aside from that, yes, I said I'm feeling amazing. Sorry if I say, um, like, this, that, or it seems like I'm trying to formulate what I'm going to say because I am. I am a cusser. And I'm trying my best to, you know, not kind of, I'm trying to stay away from it. I'm trying my best, but sometimes it just comes out and I don't want to do that. I still work. Well, what I will say is I don't, um, I don't drink heavy liquor. It's not my go-to. It depends on, you know, who I'm around, if it's family, if um, I'm just having a good time, you know, with some family or some people that I don't feel comfortable with, maybe I'll have a shot or something like that. But aside from that, I do not, hard alcohol, hard liquor is not my go-to. I think the last time I had hard liquor was probably when I made that drink um, with the bourbon. And that was months ago I uploaded that video. So that was probably the last time I drank hard liquor. My thing is wine. I would come home and that was my nightcap. I would have me one or two glasses of wine. It was my mellow, it was my calm after the storm. You know, my days are hectic. It was just like, when I come home, I need to, you know, kind of wind it down. I would have my wine. Wine was my thing and I don't even do a lot of sweets. I wasn't into cakes, pies, uh, candy, anything like that. I wasn't into that because I think I would get a lot of my sugar from wine. So it kind of suppressed me wanting to eat sweets and things like that. But since I haven't been drinking, I have been kind of overindulging in sweets. I cannot end my night now without a Snickers and I do eat fruit so I would get natural you know sweeteners but I just wasn't I can't even remember the last time I enjoyed a piece of my kids birthday cake it's been years it's been years since I would just you know have a piece of their birthday cake and I buy it I just wouldn't turn to it but my body sometimes tells me you need to have some sugar. So I would go out and get me something, you know, small. But now that I haven't been drinking, I have been eating a lot of sweets. I mean, from fruit snacks, I've been already buying bags of Halloween candy, the cookies that you put into the oven with a nice glass of milk. I, I've been going in. I've been going in on the sweets. And, you know, it is what it is. So... I feel good. My body feels great. I have um, been through like a detox mode. I was also making this water mixture and putting fruit in it. And the jug that I use, it is equivalent to about eight cups of water a day. So I make sure that I drink that the entire day while I'm at work. I used to would drink beer too. I don't have uh, tolerance really um, for it anymore. But if I go somewhere like to my dad's house and he has a fight or he's watching the games or something, yeah, I would drink a beer too. But like I said, I just don't have a tolerance for it really anymore. But my main thing was wine, just to kind of let it go. And I did, like I said, I was gonna wait about 30 days, uh, do 30 days without any wine or anything. And I'm, at, I'm approaching that mark and I still just don't have an urge for it. So it may be longer than that, and I'm not mad. 
you know, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything, but I do just kind of miss having that little moment for myself. That was my, my thing for me. So if I do have a glass of wine or something, we'll see. Like I said, I'm really not, it is what it is. And what we're here for, the bugs are tearing me up. The weather will have you in and the driving will take you out. And how do I feel about Florida? I like it, I like it. I have officially re-signed my lease. So we're already a year down in Florida, which is cool with me. Uh, I wouldn't probably had moved anyway if you know I was presented with the chance to because my oldest son, he's now a senior and I wouldn't want to move him in his senior year. We're all at the point where we're pretty comfortable. You know, they like it here. I like it here. You know, it's been cool. It's been cool, but it's going to be things that you do like and you don't like wherever you go. You know, you got to weigh the pros and the cons and just figure out if it's for you. Try to make it your own the best way you can. And that's what we pretty much been doing. We kind of just been doing our thing, having a little fun in the sun. If it's not to the point where it's draining, I felt like... I thought it was an issue with my asthma and I would go outside sometimes in the heat and I would literally feel like I can't breathe. I feel like I can't breathe out there. And because I thought it was an issue with my asthma, I went and I talked to my doctor about it and she's like, no, you know, it's a thing here. It's, it's a thing. And I was like, okay, so it made me feel a lot better. But I also came here and I ended up on another asthma medication because of that. And that wasn't, you know, what I was shooting for. I didn't want to add anything already to what I was taking for my asthma. I just, I'm trying to move away from that, which is why I'm trying to, you know, find, hey, which is why I'm trying to find, you know, healthier habits to kind of include into my day to day with, you know, doing my little exercise thing that I kind of been doing in my room or whether I go down to the gym but some of the facilities have kind of been closed. We haven't been able to go to the pool a couple of times. And if there's nobody in the office, you won't have access to the gym. And, you know, that's kind of like, uh, you know, you're paying for this stuff and you want to utilize it when you want to. And now that they're kind of going through their thing, you can't. So yeah, that's where we're at with that. Um, Am I considering moving again? Yes. And here's why. My background pertaining to my degree is human services. And homelessness is a big issue in this area. I don't know if you watched one of my previous videos where I was going into Big Lots. It's an older video, but it was kind of when I first came and I was walking into Big Lots. And if you pay attention, you can actually see a homeless person laying right there on the ground in front of the store. Is there homelessness in Cleveland? Yes, it's everywhere. Um, but in Cleveland, they kind of push them and direct them into a certain area. So you're not going to walk into a mall, a big lots, a store and see someone laying outside on the ground. And it was just a big eye opener. And with me having a background in human services, it just kind of made me dig. And I wanted to do some research and that's exactly what I did. So when I came back home one evening, I got on my computer and because I go so many places and I see so many homeless people just scattered amongst the streets, I got to looking into shelters where are the resources for the people that need this assistance? So I found one shelter. It's not a regular homeless shelter. It is like a transitional shelter, but it also was faith-based. And I guess if you go into this transitional shelter, one of the requirements that they ask or tell that they have to do is attend church and i get it i don't know you know but 
I feel like for that to be a requirement for you to live there, I don't know. You know, it's some things that I don't get with here. But like I said, it was one shelter and then the rest of the shelters were kind of more, you know, you had to do some driving. You had a big commute and I mean a big commute as in like an hour and 30 minutes. And if they're homeless, they're probably carless. So how are they getting to this area that's an hour and a half commute away? They're not, which is why they're sleeping wherever. They're sleeping in front of stores, especially stores that attract a lot of traffic where people are gonna be walking in. So grocery stores is a big one. You're walking into the grocery store, there's gonna be a few homeless people outside of the grocery store. Either they're looking for bottles of water, they're looking for you know little finger foods or things that they can kind of just throw over in their bag. So with that being said, if there aren't very many resources for the people, where are the jobs? So that was just something else then for me to research. Where am I gonna be working? I literally graduate in about two months with my second degree and I need a job, I'm gonna need a job. So now I'm looking into the positions. I would say from here, and I'm in the Orlando metropolitan area. I'm not direct, you know, smack dab in, what is that, Orange County, where most of the tourist attractions and things like that are. So I'm a little bit away from there, but I want to say between where I live and even down to where my dad live in the Tampa area, I found maybe five positions. So then I started thinking, maybe these are the positions that people tend to hold on to because there aren't many, you know, job positions that they would want to take. And yes, I do believe you should take what you can, entry level, get your foot in the door, you know, get some experience. But the pay, the pay, <laughs> laughable the pay is laughable like florida is one of the least paying states for human service professionals i'm gonna give them number 40 out of 50 states of being the least paying for human service professionals most of the higher paying ones of course are west and mind you i was headed to cali before I landed in Florida. Um, and over there is the top highest paying positions for human service professionals. And I'll also add in, in the top 10, I'll throw in Texas and Alaska. And I'll put them in the top 10 with Cali, the state of Washington. Everything over there pays pretty decent. That's probably where the money is. Where I see myself in those top 10 states, probably one, maybe Texas, maybe, maybe. Where I see myself in the lowest top 10 would be either to stay here. Um, I'd say Georgia, Alabama are also in those top 10 for the lowest paying. And I could see myself anywhere south, honestly. I don't know. You know, at this point, I feel like while I'm still in school and, you know, working my way through these last couple of months, I have something to consider and think about. Even if I do stay in Florida, I'm definitely going to have to leave this area. I'm going to have to look for something else in a different area. So I'm going to cut this short. I feel like I've been here rambling. I don't know. Maybe I haven't, but I have some things to do. Uh, I want to cook dinner. I'm trying to clean both of my bathrooms. I have a couple of loads of clothes to do. I also want to give the dog a bath and 
I have to write a paper. Let me get off this phone.